A number of years ago, my office mate came into the office and said, Chris, I've got a cool problem for you. You see, he was designing a distributed database system that had to run across thousands of computers and had a ginormous data set. And he'd written a protocol that would allow us to do transactions across those computers. But that protocol assumed that every time you run a transaction, you could assign that transaction a unique identifier, a globally unique ID. And his problem was, he was asking me, Chris, what's the best way to write a function in C that every time you call it, it gives you a different number, a different globally unique identifier? And so I was thinking about it's actually kind of a cool problem. How do you write the best globally unique identifier function? Pause the video right now and think about it for a minute. And then when you come back, we'll talk about the thought process that went into designing this function. So the first thing you're thinking about is, well, what exactly is a globally unique identifier? Well, it's a number which is unique. It seems pretty obvious, but by unique, I mean is every time you call this function, it will never ever generate the same number, not on the same computer, not on a different computer, not for the entire lifespan of your system, so that you can use it to uniquely identify your transactions. And so since it has to be unique through all of time, your first intuition might be, well, cool. Well, I'll just use time for this. So maybe I could call get time of day. And then every microsecond, I'll have generated a new globally unique identifier from get time of day, and I'll never get a collision there, right? Well, that might actually work if you only have a single computer, but what if you have a thousand computer or thousands of computers? You might accidentally call the function at the same time on two different computers. So we need a way of telling apart those IDs that come from different computers. So we need to mix into this somehow the identity of the computer. And the identity of a computer can be something simple like its IP address. Maybe you could use an ethernet card hardware address or maybe even a CPU serial number. But the basic idea is if you concatenate the identity of the computer with the time of day, microseconds since the epoch, it should never repeat, right? Well, there's actually one, well, at least one other problem with this. One is, um, what if you invoke this function twice in the same microsecond? Well, then you need something to disambiguate that. Maybe you add some more bits with a counter that you increment every time you call the function so that it can't have a conflict across a single microsecond. So that might solve that problem. But then there's one other problem, which is time doesn't always go monotonically forward on computers. If you're using NTP and you computer's clock happens to skew too far, then NTP will just roll your clock backwards to set it to the correct time. So you need to account for that and maybe modify your NTP to do a gradual rollback backwards and not do ever do a sudden change in time. Okay, so now we've got a solution that works. And the question is, is this the best solution for generating a globally unique ID? Well, you might ask yourself, how easy is it for a computer to generate the time of day with get time of day? And if you start looking at it, you'll notice that it's not actually the fastest function call in the world. So maybe we want to do something more efficient. What can we do that's more efficient? Well, we already talked about just incrementing a counter. So how about every time you call the unique ID function, it takes the machine ID and then just reads a memory location, increments it and says, this is your new ID. Will that work? Well, yeah, that will generate unique IDs. And as long as your counters are big enough, they'll never repeat themselves for the lifespan of the system. But what happens if your computer reboots? If your computer reboots, the counter resets to zero again, and then you might get repetitions. Well, that's not good. So what we need to do is we need to somehow store that counter across a reboot so that we don't reuse a counter. And so we could write our counter to disk. But if we wrote our counter to disk, every time we invoke the function, it would be slow because we'd have to wait for a disk write to complete and disks are slow. Flash is faster, but it's still not as fast as RAM. So we need something better. And so what we could do instead is say only every thousand or 10,000 or a million invocations of this function 
we write the disk what our unique ID is. And then when the computer reboots, we just read it off of disk and initialize our counter to the last thing stored plus a thousand or plus a million, whatever our increment is. And now we've got a solution that works pretty well. And you might be asking yourself by now, do I really need to implement all this? Doesn't my operating system provide this for me? And the answer is it might. This is called a UUID or a GUID, a universally unique or globally unique identifier. And Windows gives you a function that will generate these. Also, uh, many SQL systems will give you a function that generates these. So you might not need to implement this at all. And so that's how you go about generating a unique identifier. And it's not really an interesting distributed systems problem because we've just totally distributed the computation. We just run it independently on each computer and we're done. So it's actually a pretty good design if all you need is uniqueness. But then my office mate gave me the real challenge. What he said is, yeah, that gives you something unique, but I also want to use these identifiers to resolve conflicts in our transactions. When two transactions access the same data to decide which one rolls forward and which one rolls backwards. And I wanted these identifiers to resolve conflicts in a way such that whichever transaction starts first wins the conflict battle and whichever one starts second loses. And so what I really want is every time you invoke this unique ID function, not only does it generate a unique ID, but I also want to generate an ID which is bigger than any ID that's ever been generated in the past. In other words, what we want is a monotonically increasing unique ID. So how do you tweak your function to do that? Time to pause the video again. I want you to sit and think about this. How do you write a function that every time you invoke it, not only generates a unique number, but also generates a unique number that gets bigger over time? Welcome back again. And so at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you mentioned time again. Why not tweak our solution to use time again? And instead of having the machine ID first and then the time, let's swap them around. We'll just say, put the time first and then the machine ID. And then over time, your time gets bigger. The machine ID will make sure that it's unique and problem solved, right? Yes, but that doesn't guarantee that when I call this function two times on two different computers, that the second one will have a bigger ID than the first one. And the reason is, is because for it to guarantee that, our clocks on the various computers need to be perfectly synchronized. And anytime they skew at all, as clocks tend to do because synchronization is hard, you might not generate monotonically increasing IDs. So time, would require us to get really accurate clock synchronization. Do we really want to try and solve the problem of clock synchronization? I don't want to because it's just really hard. So maybe we can come up with a solution that doesn't synchronize the clocks. Well, if we're not going to synchronize the clocks and we want them to get bigger over time, the machines need to talk to each other somehow. Why not just have a single server that runs in our cluster and that server generates an ID whenever you ask it for an ID. It can then run the same code that we had before, which is an incrementing counter and writing the disk periodically, and you're great, right? Well, that would work. Um, it might be slower than our previous solution because it require a network round trip to generate an ID, so we'd have to deal with that. It also has the problem of that machine. If it ever fails, we need to back it up somewhere. So we can't just save to local disk the ID. We need to save to more than one disk on more than one computer, or maybe save to a network file system. But you know, we can work it out. We can have automatic failover. We can load, wait, can we load balance? Can we have more than one server handing out these IDs at the same time? Well, maybe, that's actually an interesting question. If we have two servers and you go to one of the two random servers and ask for a unique ID, will it be able to generate an ID that's bigger than any that's been generated by any server in the past? Well, no, not without asking the other servers first. So can't distribute it that way. Maybe we can create a tree-like distribution. Maybe we can make it so that 
when you ask the leaves of the tree, it goes up to the root to make sure it's getting the biggest one, but then every request you send to a leaf would end up in a request to the root, and so the root server would be the same as our single server in the first place, so that that wouldn't actually be any more efficient, because it would just generate a lot more network traffic and use more computers to solve the exact same problem. So, if you think about this, if you really strictly want monotonically increasing IDs over time, then you have to have those IDs stored in one single location so that every transaction requires you to communicate with that one single location. There's no way of distributing this and maintaining that strict monotonicity property, which I think is something that makes this problem rather interesting because we have this urge to try and distribute the problem, but a centralized solution really is the only solution that strictly meets the spec of we always have monotonically increasing unique IDs. As a distributed systems designer, the next question I ask is, well, how strict is this requirement anyways? What goes wrong if we violate the monotonicity property? And that's where the discussion with my office mate got really interesting because what he said was, well, it makes the system go a little bit slower, but you still get the right answer. You st it still maintains correctness. And so then we got into a discussion, well, well, what ways can we relax this requirement of monotonicity? And we talked about using timers again, because if our clocks aren't perfectly in sync, we can still use clocks and still be correct. Just might be a little bit of a performance problem if our clocks skew a bit. Or maybe we can hand out batches of IDs from the server at a time, where if you ask it for an ID, it gives you 100 IDs to use up, and then you only go back to the server once you've used those 100 IDs up. And we came up with a scheme where we hand out batches of IDs and we made something overly complicated. And then when we built the actual system and measured it, we found that it was good enough to just hand out one ID at a time and don't worry about the batching mechanism. Don't worry about anything more sophisticated because it was fast enough. Our system's performance, the transactions, weren't dominated by the time it takes to get these IDs. They were dominated by other disk writes from the transactions themselves. And so... I guess the lesson here is, is if you're faced with a simple problem, you could probably iterate for hours on what the best solution is, and you might come to the conclusion that the simplest solution, which you come up with, just a simple server that hands out one ID, then the next one, then the next one, is good enough. Try things out, experiment, and have fun with your systems designs.